Lee Mac 912. You look a little rough today, Lee Mac 912. That's what you's looking. You's looking a little damn rough. And <laughs> That what I say to that, and whew, good friend of mine told me one day, she, you're looking a little homeless is what she said. You look a little homeless. <laughs> and <laughs> Woo, family, today we're going to talk about uh, cigars that's expensive for no damn good reason. Cigars that's expensive for no damn good reason. That's what we gonna talk about. Uh, and I may or may not be talking about this cigar brand that I'm gonna be smoking and reviewing today. You'll have to just see. But today from El Septimo from the Empress Collection, we are smoking the Empress of Sheba. Empress of Sheba and it says on the bottom, Geneva. So she's got a lot of different names on there. Uh, maybe that's, maybe that, maybe that's what her mama call her, Geneva. She the Empress of, of, of uh, Sheba, but Geneva, get in here and watch these damn dishes. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna find out. This might have been made in Switzerland. We gonna find out all the details, but anyway, that is the Empress of Sheba on the band. She's a very pretty looking black woman. Uh, she is royal, regal, good skin. Yeah, good skin, know what I say. Nice cigar. I'm gonna give you all the details. This one is not as expensive as some of the other ones in the line. I know, I know, listen, I know, I know, I know. Hold on, just give me a second. There's your density. <laughs> Yo, hold on, I'll be right back. <laughs> Woo! The Emperor Collection. I gotta read some information on this cigar because I don't know. It's a big, fat, fat, fatty. Shout out to my brother Jason. I talked to him the other night. He had a little something going on, some things going on with the band. If you follow him, you know what was going on. So I had to call my brother just because I had to. So this looks like a six by 60. So she's a big six by 60. Now, you know, I am not a, I am not a, uh, I'm, first of all, Lee Mac 912, look, we're gonna need you to talk and speak towards the front in the microphone so we can hear you. Cause when you turn your back to the microphone, how the hell are we supposed to hear you? You know, I don't smoke six by 60 cigars, but for some reason, when I picked this one up, it felt like a fat Toro. And I think I was shopping price cause I think I only paid like $20 for this one. Only $20 cause it's El Septimo. You know how El Septimo is. Expensive. Days, expensive. I got one of these little El Septimos. I don't even know how much it costs or where I got it from. It is, let's see, three inches long. It's the bullet, El Septimo, bullet. Expensive. A box of 10, 242.40. That means that that little three inch cigar is $24. Three inch cigar. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Let's move on. The Empress of Sheba, the Emperor Collection, they've got 11 new cigars in their first line of Connecticut wrapped, dedicated to the world's most sovereign rulers. Hmm. They are even introducing a limited edition crossover with one of your blends. The King Sargon, part of the Gilgamesh Collection, in order of King Sargon being the world's 
first ever emperor. This collection boasts lighter body, smoother, creamier blends than our Sacred Arts launch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In Connecticut, Amaduro wrappers, hand rolled, aged for five years, that uh, could be a part of the price. Uh, and this is the newest one, six by 60, Maduro Gordo, the Empress of Sheba. Full body blend, dedicated to black history after the great African queen, Sheba. She was a bad, bad, shut your mouth. Yeah, she was queen of Sheba, African queen. Uh, six by 60, dark oily stick, packs in absolutely as much tobacco in this ring gauge size without compromising the burn. Full body white pepper spices, perfect addition to the strong female empress in a collection of male emperors. So, doesn't really tell me much about what the, let me see if I can find out what the blend is. Yeah, this cigar is about 20 bucks. 101 bucks for five. Oh, and the wrapper, binder, and filler is undisclosed. So there you go. You don't know what it is. But let's see. We go five, so it's uh, $20.20. How about that? $20.20. It's a six by 60. A big old, big old honking cigar. We're gonna look into El Septimo. One of the things I know about El Septimo is uh, expensive. And some of the experiences that I've had have said, yeah, it's expensive, but it ain't necessarily good and expensive. It's just expensive. And you know, I don't know about y'all. My money don't come that easy. So I can't be throwing my money away on expensive things and don't get good in return but we need it we need and we owe the to we owe it to the owners of these companies to give honest feedback and i'm not talking about the world star type of feedback where you're making a viral video and all of this stuff you need to go back and talk to them that's a part of what i do in my videos i had a fish sandwich the other day from a new entity in town opened by a lady that kind of looks like me. And I'm going back over there to talk to her next week. Look, big mama, I know we all, I know we all trying to work on our blood pressure and our diabetes and all that, but if I'm eating fish and fries, I'm gonna need a little bit of salt on my fish. Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I'm just saying. All right, family, oh man, damn. Hey, look at here, man. Friends don't let friends uh, V cut. But I don't have my daggone straight cutter. Hold on, I gotta have a straight cutter around here somewhere. They be telling me to V cut for the culture. You know what I said, Burp the culture. I'll be ding a dang dang dong. I got a perfect cutter, Cuban Crafters. Perfect cut, straight cut. I hate those. I hate those. They cut so deep to me. I think I'm just. I think I'm just gonna have to V cut. I, I know y'all told me Lee Mac 912. We gonna need you to face forward, my friend. We gonna just have to V cut for the culture. So when this cigar sucks, if it sucks. It's going to be blamed on the V-cut. Oh, there we go. Oh, man, that just hurts my heart every time I look down and see that. That's just, ah, it's just so, yeah. Let's just get to the cigar. I, I just don't want to be parting the ways and, and sticking my tongue all in it. And I, okay, that's another video. Mm. Mm-mm. Just messing up my experience. Good draw. <laughs> Good draw. And see, y'all done told me y'all don't like all that. Get to get the tongue and ah, we don't like that. 
<laughs> He'd be like, I know you lying. <laughs> Family, let's go on and light up this damn cigar. Um, really nothing on the cold draw. Good light draw, like medium draw, not light bad. It's, I'm going to call it medium. Just that V-cut has it nice and open. Hmm. Got it open, baby. Anyway, we're going to light this thing up and do what we do. Brother Dexter! Hey, Brother Dexter, I'm going to call you, man, because I'm coming down your way. And I'm going to be in your neighborhood, Brother Dexter. And damn it, you better show up when I get there. Excuse me, sir. We don't have any listing for a Brother Dexter. <laughs> Ah, uh, I came to the city limits and I asked the police, where was Brother Dexter at? They said, we don't know no damn Brother Dexter. Hey, here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, cause we wanna take you high. Yeah, we gonna take you higher tonight, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, yeah, let's go. Damn, you done did all that, ain't lit the damn cigar yet. <laughs> the brother Harry brother Harry lives in Detroit and he works for GM and the funny thing about it is brother Harry don't live in uh, Detroit and he don't work for GM but that's the story I told on these videos for a long time I don't even know where the hell I got that story from okay smooth Not harsh, creamy. The draw is a little light though. I'm gonna say the draw is a little light. I think with the draw being light, it's not really, the flavors are light as well, but we'll see. Light is not bad. Even though I don't smoke a lot of 60 ring gauge and cigars, what I will tell you all the time is that I like the way a 60 ring gauge burns. It's a nice fat face. You can get it lit very well. And it'll stay lit. So that I like about it. But I'm gonna tell you on first light, my first thoughts, Tobacco. That's all I'm tasting is tobacco. 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 Yeah, it's just like tobacco. There's a little bit of a char, ash kind of a taste. Woody. Some woodiness to it. Retro is smooth. Starting to pick up some pepper on the tongue. When I do do the, the V cut though, I used to, but my V cut, my V used to go straight up and down. And I do find myself now making my V go across ways. I kind of like it better. There's a little bit of a floral in there. That pepper is increasing. So with all of those flavors I just gave you, I would say pretty complex to start. I already know what I'm gonna put in my glass and I already know what my glass, the glass I'm gonna put it in. I got a little bit of Isle of Rosé single malt scotch. This is a five-year-old scotch. I went to a scotch tasting the other night. It's a five-year-old from the Isle of Rosse. Um, special release. It is, uh, they were the Scottish Whiskey Distillery of the Year in 2022. Uh, this is aged in X Four Roses bourbon casks. 
uh, and a second. Oh, the second maturation of this one, I believe, is in a Colombian oak. So four roses, bourbon, cash, and a Colombian oak. I'm tired, family. It's been a long day. I didn't get anything I was planning to do done today, but, you know, it's all good. I'm still shopping for a car for my mama. I thought I had found the perfect car for my mama. I was like, this is it. Mine's got hybrid technology, little mini SUV, beautiful car. I sent her a picture of it. She said, yeah, that's nice, but that looks like I'm going to do some work on somebody's house, and I don't want no damn work truck. Go find me a car. <laughs> and then she hung up on me. <laughs> I'm going to put my scotch in my diamond glass that I got from Sister Tracy. Sister Tracy, thank you very much. It's something that she had been meaning to send me, or wanted to send me a time ago, a long time ago, and they were sold out. Uh, and now they are no longer sold out. I have them here. Sits on those diamond faces. It gives you natural aeration. It won't spill. It doesn't tip. It's a very nice glass. So, salute. Yeah, I'm going put to put a drop of water in that. And then we're going to sit back. We're going to smoke our cigar. We're going to see what we think about it. And we'll let you know. We'll be back, family. All right, one thing I see with this cigar is that it is made in Costa Rica. Costa Rica, where all the other El Septimo cigars are hand mold. So... That explains why some of these cigars are a little more expensive. I know cigars that are rolled in Costa Rica are expensive. They are expensive, as evidenced by other brands that roll them in Costa Rica. Now, as much as I might want to not like this cigar because I have not liked some other El Septimo cigars in the past that have been very expensive, I got to say that this one is off to a good dog start. Now, I bumped my ash, so I'm not going I'm not going to blame the ash for being light and compact. I'm going to let it straighten up cuz I did a part of it, but I believe it's kind of not a compactly rolled cigar, which would make sense because of how not loose to draw is, but it's a lighter side of light draw, lighter side of medium, whatever the hell it is. But this cigar is strength-wise, I'm going to say mild. The cigar flavor-wise, I'm going to say it's medium plus in flavor-wise. So it's a milder cigar. It's got good flavor to it. Hmm. Picking up some black coffee in the retro. White pepper. I think it said that in the, uh, I think it said that in the uh, description. Definitely some white pepper. It's not black pepper. This is rolled in Costa Rica, but it doesn't really taste like Costa Rican either. A little bit of creamy caramel on the retro still. Very complex cigar. That retro hail is so smooth that it allows you to slowly retro hail and hold that smoke in your mouth and really taste the complexity of those flavors. And it kind of picks up a little bit of a sting, not a whole lot, a little bit, but nice, I'm liking it, all right, I'm liking it. 
for the twenty dollar price so far i'm digging what i got i think this is uh i tend to call these cigars like this nuanced it's got a nuance to it it's got a ref it's a refined nuance let me call it that now for all of my new cigar smokers that might run across this video and you say i i don't i i i don't know that i I don't know that I taste the white pepper and the floral and the black coffee and the white pepper and the creamy caramel and the, the woods and I don't taste all that Lee Mac 912, that's fine. That is fine, there's nothing wrong with you. If you enjoy the cigar, enjoy the cigar. Most people enjoy the cigar for the strength and the spice level or the lack of a spice level or the creaminess or whatever. That's what most people get out of it. Most people don't go into all this detail that we go into. I liked the detail because I was studying and I was learning. And see, a part of what I bought was I bought this uh, Aromaster kit, which has got all of these different fragrances in here. So when people said leather, I never could identify leather. So I said, well, let me get leather. And what you do is you smell it. You say, what, what, is, what it says? That don't smell like leather to me. That might smell like leather, like maybe in the in the barn before it's really fully tanned or stuff. That smells very earthy to me. So I would call that flavor earthy, but it's identified as leather. Four is medicinal. That smells almost like smoking a campfire to me, but that's what they call medicinal. So you have to learn these different flavors. Uh, what we taste is based on what we smell. So anybody that's always interested or wants to know, I say, that's bread. I say, you know what? You gotta learn what these different things smell like. So if you wanna know what black pepper tastes like, and we're talking about the taste, you gotta learn what black pepper smells like. So smell it. We all got pepper. You got some, you might have a pepper grinder. Grind up some black pepper. Smell it, don't sniff it into your nose. Stick your tongue down there and taste it. And then see if you identify some of those flavors in the cigar. You can do the same thing with like cinnamon. I talked about caramel. While you're smoking your cigar, get you a piece of caramel. Taste the caramel, coat your mouth, go back to smoking the cigar. See if you can identify any of those flavors in there. Now, ash and wood, I don't know about that one. Nobody wants to chew wood, but there have been cases where you chew wood. There's a, uh, uh, we used to have these sticks, these tie sticks or whatever they were that we used to chew and people chew in some parts of the world, they brush their teeth with it and Africa, I've seen them do that. So you kind of know what that wood tastes like in your mouth, but wood is different. And if you've been around a lot of wood, you cut a lot of wood, you cut some cedar, if you cut some oak, if you cut some maple, you cut a little bit of uh, birch, you know that it smells different. So it's based on what it smells like. Now, you could say, I ain't doing all that. Ain't nobody got no time for all that. And that's cool. If you ain't got time for all that, then bump it. Don't do it. Just smoke your cigar, sip your drink, and enjoy yourself. So I'm sipping my drink out of my little diamond glass, which is pretty cool. I think the scotch is a very good pairing for this cigar. I'm digging the cigar. So as much as I wanted to not dig this cigar, I'm digging it. And I'm going to tell you, the only reason that I bought this cigar is because it was the least expensive El Septimo that I have seen to date. It's the only reason I bought it. It was $20. It's right on the cusp for me of a very expensive cigar versus one that's not worth it. Now, I've had some of theirs that I smoked that were much more expensive that was not worth the price to me. But... I know Costa Rica is an expensive country to roll cigars in. Uh, my buddy Mel from M Bombay used to have his cigars come out of Costa Rica. Uh, there's another company that I ordered direct from out of Costa Rica. A little bit more expensive, but because I'm going direct to the, the farm or whatever, they're not as expensive. So some of it I get. Some of it I think is a money grab. 
It's like the uh, the oil companies. We talk about the price of gas, right? The price of gas goes up, the price of gas goes down, but the profits of the oil companies don't never really change. They always go up, right? Some of these cigars is a money grab. Some things are more expensive. Transportation is more expensive, so therefore you would expect for your cigar to cost a little bit more because the cost of fuel is more expensive. I'm sorry, you can't put out a cigar and tell me that it's $300 a stick and tell me that that's not a money grab. That's a money grab. You know who I'm talking about. All right, I'll be back. All right, I got a few more things that, uh, that I have found out, which kind of explains to me the pricing of these cigars. This brand has been big in Europe and the Middle East since 2005. Money a little bit different in the Middle East. I'm just saying. So I get it. I also think that these cigars are, if I have to guess, it says, what are our, what are our cigars made of? And they talk about Costa Rica, premium quality tobacco, uh, very fertile, rich soils due to the volcanic soil and stones possessing less than 35% base saturation. They use precision farming techniques, which increases crop yield. So, again, these cigars are probably made with Costa Rican tobacco. Expensive. Makes sense to me. I like Costa Rican tobacco. These cigars are also completely organic with zero preservatives or chemicals added. Free of nitrosamines, tars, and impurities. So again, there's a different farming technique that they use. I think they are doing things that was going to be a little bit more costly. When they decided to do their cigars, first step was find the best raw materials, the perfect tobacco leaf. Boosted by growing demand, the, the, the intensive farming methods already had a catastrophic effect on the stock and depleted soil, right, by using traditional blends. So they had to find new soil. So they created their own supply by blending the best tobacco from fields all over Latin America. Then our team found the ideal place to plant and age the delicious seeds in the lush mountains of San Jose, Costa Rica. Bing, bing, bing. There you go. That's why it's expensive. All right, I got a newfound respect for El Septimo. Because I know it's expensive in uh, Costa Rica. I also know that on good authority, all tobacco that's called Costa Rican ain't Costa Rican. Could be another reason. And it makes sense to me. It makes sense to me. It makes sense to me if I was to blend this with something else, which shall may remain nameless, and Costa Rican, I would have a milder body cigar, and I would have a slight pepper to it. Costa Rican and Honduran tends to have what I call a cinnamon spice to it. This reminds me more of a white pepper, but I could go cinnamon, but it's not as strong as the cinnamon spice. So the spice is, is a milder spice, but good spice. I like it. Side note, family, when you borrow people's shit, give it back to them like you got it. Also, family, you know, there are places where we can go and we can invest our money and we don't have to have like large amounts of money to invest in the stock market like you used to. You can go places like Cash App and Robinhood and you can buy fractional shares of companies that you think are doing things good or bad. They don't take a lot of money. You could take five dollars and buy five dollar share a fractional piece of a share of uh, Tesla or Amazon or something like that 
whatever you think is going to be going up, you can buy. And if it doesn't go up, you can sell. And you can play the stock market if that's what you feel like. That little piece of money that I stuck over in Amazon, like, it's doing pretty good. Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree ain't doing so good. But, you know, those are the companies that I thought was going to be doing very well. So, you know, the thing with, uh, like, Cash App, they've got the, uh, the experts will give you an opinion on whether you should buy, sell, or hold. You can follow them or you can follow your gut. It's up to you. All right, family, I'll be back. All right, all right, all right, family. We are still smoking a Queen of Sheba, and she just does not want to burn straight. I keep touching it up. I keep touching it up, but she, for whatever reason, doesn't want to burn on one side. But the flavor on the cigar is still pretty good. I'm still liking it. I'm still not mad at the $20 price, even though I want it to be, but I'm not. Like I said earlier, the, the scotch is a good pairing with this. This is a nice five-year-old single malt. I'm really digging this glass. It sits here nice on the side, lets it aerate very nice. You got a lot of space in there. You can swirl it around and aerate it. Very nice. Long day today, family. Long day. And I'm tired now. But that's the thing that I love about cigars is that at the end of a hard day, you can really sit down with your cigar and just kick back, relax, enjoy yourself, unwind. I like watching YouTube videos, all different kinds of stuff. I've been into watching the Sovereign Citizens lately and the Moorish Americans. <laughs> brother's channel I watch is called True Science. I like True Science. <laughs> it's amazing the things that people believe. Not just in this, but all different kinds of things. We have things in religion and politics and social stuff in society that different people believe that other people don't believe. You got to learn to let people believe what they believe. And if it's not what you believe, then that's cool. I'm good with you believing what you believe because it don't have to affect me at all. And it doesn't. So I let you do what you do. Just like that V cut. I let you believe that the V cut is the way. I'm a straight cat type, straight cut type of cat. Shout out to my sister, Cindy Saka. I talked to her today. Steve Saka's better half. Very nice lady. And I appreciate Steve and Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust for the sponsorship of my channel and all the things that they do for us. And uh, I appreciate my family and all of the folks that go out there and purchase the Another Great Day cigars. Sight unseen, when I tell you it's a good cigar, you go out and you buy them, you sell them out. I appreciate y'all doing that. I appreciate everybody that shows up for our hearths. <clears throat> we never have a huge crowd on the hearth, but the crowd is just huge enough. And if you're not on the hearth when we have another great day hearth, all I can say is that you miss a good time because we have a great time on the hearth. We really, really have a great time. Everybody that has been on the hearth that for whatever reason you're working, it's birthday, kids have an event, you can't come. They all say, man, I'm, I'm sorry that I missed it. Yeah, me too. Shout out to the number one moderator, LaTanya. Appreciate you for all of the things that you do for the channel and for the family. We have a good time. And it's all about it's all about family and hooking up folks, you know. You you think about I got a brother that lives down there in Florida and I got another brother that lives in New Orleans and when he came to Florida he said I'm gonna come by and see my brother over there, hook them up. I got a sister that 
It's got some folks that are moving to New Orleans. My brother in New Orleans said, hey, give them my number. If they need anything, let me know. It's, it's that way all over. Shout out to my brother Cowboy out in St. Louis. They have hooked up with some of the family members. The Cowboy family and the Lee Mac family have gotten together. No issues, no problems. Shout out to brother Dexter and my man Kodak, the most hated. Shout out to you. Shout out to you, Dark Green, El Marino. I start calling names. I'm going to forget somebody. Gray Man, Anthony Smiley. Daryl Galt, we ain't seen in a while. My brother, the adaptive dad, he's down in Jacksonville. I hope I got to catch up with my brother. I'd like to meet him in person one day. One day soon. Real cool brother, and he's a part of the Lee Mack family and Lee Mack's success. Even though I don't see him around very often, he was very instrumental in the beginning, and I believe I was instrumental in his life at a point when he needed some encouragement. And when I see him now, and I see that young lady that he has, it was a little girl when we first started talking. Now she's a young lady. I smile, and I'm encouraged, and I feel like that's another one of my daughters that's growing up. That's his daughter. That's my daughter's growing up. That's what it's all about, family. It's all about family. And, and we are not all a part of the same family. Sometimes we are a part of different families. Sometimes we are part of multiple families. We have different cigar groups and si different cigar channels, uh, different cigar creators, and there are different people that gravitate towards one group or one family or another, right? There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You go hang out with the people you like to hang out with, the people who you enjoy. Not everybody enjoys hanging out with Lee Mack. You do, because you're here, especially at this point in the video. But if you like hanging out with one of my other brothers or sisters that's doing something that's over there, and you would like to hang out with me, I don't have a problem with that. If you like hanging out with them and you don't want to hang out with me, I don't have a problem with that. We gotta learn to appreciate each other's differences. Like I said earlier, shout out to my brother, Jason Ritchie. Jason is my brother. Period, period end of the story. I am Jason's brother, period end of story. Now you, some people want to come and they want to start pointing out the differences. I like to look and say, here's the things that we have in common. Cause here's what I know, one thing for sure and two for certain. If I need something and I ring Jason's phone, Jason don't answer the phone, he gonna get back to me. He gonna say, what you need, big bro, I got you. Period. But it's not just Jason, it's a lot of people. Shout out to my brother, Matt Mitchell. My sister, Tracy. These are all good folks that we have met in the cigar family. We all enjoy cigars, we all like to sit around and smoke our cigars and talk trash and whatever. But when it all comes down to it, I mean, I believe this. If there is an emergency, if there is someone that needs help, all we got to do is just send up the flag and say, you know what, brother so-and-so needs some help. Sister so-and-so needs some help. What can we do? And we squat up and we help them. We don't try to tear people down. Shout out to my brother, Ock. He and I disagree on Padrones all the time. It's my brother. I pick up the phone and I call my brother. It's no questions asked and vice versa. So we gotta stop, we gotta learn, we just really gotta stop all of this hate. All of this hate because people are different than you. If you don't like what somebody is doing, don't go watch them, leave them alone. You don't have to, you don't have to go to their channel and just beat them down. You ain't got to do that. Leave them alone.
All right, family, I'm going to get my numbers together. I'm going to come on back and get out of here. I like this cigar. I'm going to say mild, medium, and strength. I'm going to say flavor, medium plus to full in the flavor. It's a full flavor cigar, very good flavorful cigar, a uh, lot of complex flavors in it. Nice, clean finish. I'm digging the cigar. I'm going to give you my numbers and we're going to get them out of here because I've been talking a long time, you know. Sometimes I do these videos and I just ramble on. I don't even know what the hell I'm talking about sometimes. But sometimes, every once in a while, something that I said means something to somebody. Might not be during the premiere. Might not even be the year that the video was put out. Sometimes it's years later, I'll get a comment on a video and say, man, I really need to hear that today. You was talking to me. That's the way it goes. So don't for a minute think that I have any hate for any other person in the cigar space. Whether I get along with you or not, whether I like you or not, I don't, I don't hate anybody. My grandmother taught me not to hate anybody. I let you do what you do, even if I don't agree with it. Some of my biggest, I want to call them cigar beefs, have started from somebody that didn't like how I handled the situation and wanted me to handle the situation the way that they wanted the situation to be handled. Well, that ain't the way it's going to happen. Never going to happen that way. My daddy used to say all the time, there's only two things I got to do in life is uh, stay black and die. So all it is about what I got to do and how I need to do it and what I should do, mm -mm, that don't work with me. Because one thing you can say about me is that I am recalcitrant. That's just me. Am I a bad dude? I don't think so. Do you agree with me all the time? No, you shouldn't. Do you agree on me with me on these cigars in my rating of it? No, all the time you shouldn't. I was in the shop the other night. We were going through some stuff, different brands or whatever. I'm like, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of that one. I'm not a fan. Oh man, I love this. I love that and I love this. Well, I'm not a fan of all three of those. Does that mean you shouldn't buy it? No. You smoke what you like. Don't let nobody tell you what you should like and what you should do. Don't do that. All right, family. Let me get on out of here because this is getting way too damn long. All right, family. Let me give you my numbers for the price. It's a $20 cigar. I'm going to give it a 3.4 for the price. Uh, flavor 3.75 definitely a very flavorful cigar five on the construction overall smoking experience 3.75 I really did enjoy this cigar it's going all the way down to the nub it's been a long smoking experience I got my money's worth out of this one and more which gives this one a 3.9 out of 5 on the Lee Mac 912 scale family when you wake up in the morning you got to tell yourself today it's going to be another great day and why you got to do that because you don't know Man, I keep messing that up. Your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the truth and the lie. It doesn't know the difference between the truth and the lie, so you might as well tell it a good doggone lie. Whatever you tell your subconscious mind, it hears and believes. It doesn't care if it's the truth or not. If you say, I am worth a million dollars, money is going to be attracted to me, I am going to make a million dollars today. People like me. People are attracted to me. I am a good person. I am whatever it is you say. That's what your subconscious mind believes. Helps me to have a great day every single day, family, no matter what happens. Today, I didn't get done what I needed to get done, but I also did get done some things that I got off of my plate. I borrowed my neighbor's lawnmower and it stopped running. So now I'm on YouTube University trying to figure out how to fix this damn lawnmower before I give it back to the guy. We got it fixed. And it's running better than it was when I got it. So, you know, that's it. All right, family. Lee Mac 912, I'm out. I'll see you next time. Peace.